Hello everyone, it is Mr. Stubstep, and today we're getting so close to finishing up Black and White. We just have a few loose ends to tie up. We're going to be doing the McDonald's promos that came out during the Black and White era. There were actually three years that it came out, 2011, 2012, and 2013. But apparently 2013 was like a France exclusive, so I don't have too much information on that, and I will not be going over the France exclusive, but 2011 and 2012 did come out in English, so I'll be going over those today. I'm going to be honest... You can look at these sheets and look at the numbers, but there's really nothing astounding within these. If you have these cards, it's awesome. They're old McDonald's cards, but there's just really nothing spectacular about these, and they're not in high demand, so there's that. But, like always, I'll have timestamps down below if you just want to skip right to the card discussion, as well as links to my other value discussions, as well as a link to the playlist containing all my value discussions, which includes all the X and Y sets and promos, as well as all the Sun and Moon sets and promos, and some sword and shield sets up to vivid voltage i believe so and all the black and white sets now so we'll go over the um the google sheet really quick so the card self-explanatory if it's in just the pokemon on the card the name if it's in red that means it's one that'll be going over today if it's italicized that means i own the card i do not own any cards from the mcdonald's promos of 2011 2012 they're all promo rarity ron tcg player is rounded up to the nearest it's the market market price value on TCG Player rented down to the nearest dollar. So a lot of these cards aren't sold very frequently, so you see them fairly cheap here. They might be way more expensive. You might be able to get them for like a cent or like a dollar if nobody's looking. Um, grade, there's only two graded cards on this spreadsheet, so we won't be getting into that. And there were best offers accepted, so yeah. Sold price, it's the price that it sold at rounded up to the nearest dollar, not including shipping, but there was just two best offers on here, so it doesn't really apply too much. Data sales when that listing or auction ended. PSA 10 population, the number on the left represents the number of 10s, and the number on the right has the number currently registered with PSA. And this spreadsheet, I started making on the 9th of October and then finished it up on the 10th of October. So, yeah, but this data does not seem like it's changing as frequently as, say, some modern stuff that's being submitted. But we'll start out with 2011. So... Set release on June 6, 2011, and there are 12 cards, just like uh, the previous ones that we went over in X and Y. 12 cards in this set. So, we have this Snivy, one of the Generation 5 starters. This is black and white, so of course they're going to have some Generation 5 um, features on these promos. It sells for a dollar ungraded. Every single card within these sets sells for at least a dollar, sometimes two. But, you know, you might get an Oshawa that sells for four, but we won't skip too far ahead. And the Snivy is actually the number one it's the highest number graded within the 2011 McDonald's set. So there's that. We have Audino in a PSA 2. So apparently there was a seller that had two of these cards graded in a PSA 2. I don't, I feel like PSA 2 is one of the hardest grades to get because it's bad, but it's not bad enough to get a 1. Because I feel like once you get to a certain amount of damage, just everything is a 1. But getting a 2 is like right on that cusp. So I feel like a PSA 2 is pretty rare. But for an Audino, like, nothing special. There are zero tens, And then the Maractus, same seller, same listing. I'm curious what the best offer was. I wonder if it was, like, 15 bucks or 10 bucks or... I don't even know, because... I mean, it's cool to have cards in slabs, but a PSA 2, Audino, Maractus just seems kind of silly. We have Padov. $3 raw. Look at that. Padov has a $3 card. This Is this the only $3 Padov card? Who knows? Who knows? We have Tepig. Another Generation 5 starter. Poor Snivy at the at the bottom, and then Tepig and Oshawott at the top. Tepig, $4. Only one has been submitted for grading, and it was not a 10, so poor little Tepig. And, yeah, as you guys can see, that a lot of these McDonald's promos have been, you know, kind of consistently keeping up with that type of hollow foil pattern, which isn't my favorite, but it is unique and distinctive, so I'll give him that. And then, finally, Oshawott, the... Uh, the third generation, or f the third generation five starter. I personally, like, Oshawa is my least favorite out of all the starters, but this one is tied for the most popular, or the most expensive car within this set, ungraded. Thought that was interesting, and one out of six of graded ten. so somebody out there has the PSA 10 Oshawa 2011 McDonald's promo. It's impressive. I tried to find a complete set, and I found 10 out of the 12 being sold, and that sold for 21 bucks. Magic Complete set would probably sell for a little bit more, but, I mean, 
If you really, really wanted to, you could probably go on TCG Player or eBay and get all these cards for less than 50 bucks. And that's like high, high, high. Like you could probably get it less for 30, less than like 30 or 40, but no more than $50 for all these cards. And then I couldn't find a pack. I'm not even sure if these came in packs or maybe it was just like one card at a time in the, in the Happy Meals or whatever, but yeah. Now we'll move on to 2012. So as you can see here, release date, 14 June, 2012. And 12 cards again. So, whoa, that was quick. Start out with Servine. Servine. That's how I think of like Bovine and all that stuff. But Servine evolves from Snivy. So interesting, a lot of some of the cards within the set, I would say about half the set is evolutions from, or maybe not half, but a handful are evolutions from ones that were in the previous set in 2011, which is interesting. Servine only one graded, and it was not a 10. And three dollars ungraded, so cool. Servine, Servine's a cutie, I guess. Looks like a little green banana. Dewat, look at that. Dewat, four dollars. Another middle evolution for one of the generation five starters. So getting its respect. I always thought middle evolution was so awkward. I guess it's kind of like teenagers how they're just awkward. Middle evolutions, I feel the same way. You know the the um the basic or you know the the babies or whatever, they're just, they're very cute. And then the final evolutions are powerful and strong. And then the middle evolutions are just awkward. We have Purloin selling for $4. Not even any graded. So there was actually three cards within the 2012 set that haven't even been graded at all, at least with PSA. All of the 2011 ones have been graded at least once. 2012, even less popular than 2011. You thought 2011 was unpopular? 2012, even less popular but i mean if you have a bunch of middle evolutions and the best card is dwebble like what do you expect we have pig knight evolution of tepig four dollars ungraded two out of three graded at ten we have amolga this is actually a pretty cute card i'll give it to them amolga six dollars woof we getting up there six dollars one out of four graded at ten and yeah this is a cute card i was never a huge fan of amolga because amolga looks like it's weak but i can actually take some hits in the video game and it's typing is flying and electric which is kind of annoying to deal with too so yeah amolga axiu axiu is one, maybe one of my favorite like baby dragon pokemon because the haxorus is freaking cool and six dollars ungraded not bad another cutie zero out of one graded to ten and the king of all of these, including 2011 and 2012 cards, is the almighty Dwebble. $11. Wow. Double digits. That's where we're at now. Dwebble double digits. This is a very cute card. I will admit this is probably the best looking card out of all the cards. I'm not sure if this card is um playable or whatever or at the time it was i have no idea where dwebble is the most expensive card out of these but dwebble is maybe dwebble was short printed i have no idea if somebody has information out there that'd be cool but i found it interesting and then finally i did find a complete set of these sold for 40 bucks so i would imagine that would probably be what the 2011 one sells for maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less but so 40 bucks plus like five dollars shipping and yeah not too bad, not too bad. I'm sure if you truly wanted to collect, because I know the 25th anniversary one's kind of annoying because there's 25 hollow versions and there's 25 non-hollow versions of all the cards, but a lot of these prior McDonald's sets are a little bit more accessible, or not accessible, but they're easier to collect as far as money, like value, but I feel like a lot of these might be kind of hard to find, but I think I was able to find at least one listing of each of these cards on eBay, so yeah, very... uh very nice little breakdown of this. I know most people probably won't watch this or this is probably like boring to them, but just for completion's sake, I have to include the McDonald's promos. And then whenever I do another video of this type of flavor, it'll just be ranking all the black and white sets by collectability, which is one of my favorite videos to do because it's just kind of like a good summary and just a recap of everything. And if you don't have time to watch all these, I, I completely understand. But yeah, that's all I have for this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any McDonald's promos cards for many years, please let me know. And yeah, just give me any feedback down below if, you know, if I can improve in any way or just give me a dislike if you didn't like this or give me a like if you liked it, you know? So yeah, that's all I have. I will catch you guys in the next video.